and I'm Steve. And this is it. our Odie. supervisor, Odie. Best little kitty ever. Okay. Alright, let's do that again. Welcome to our build series for our 4 inch scale Burrell DCC road locomotive traction engine kit by Steam Traction World of Daventry, England. This is supplied as a series of 30 fully machined kits to build a fully operational steam traction engine. Each kit includes all parts, hardware, detailed packing lists, assembly diagrams, and instructions. Kits arrive approximately one per month. Parts must then be cleaned, fitted, painted, and assembled using standard workshop hand tools and a few basic power tools. No machining on a lathe or mill are necessary. When complete, the engine will be 33 inches wide, 83 inches long, and 48 inches high with a weight of 1,650 pounds. The boiler is 10.5 inch diameter, built of welded steel boiler plate, and designed and tested for an operating pressure of 180 psi. The engine features a crankshaft driven water pump and steam injector, Stevenson's valve gear, rubber tires, an operational governor, and working rear differential, and has a three speed transmission and an axle mounted drum winch. A steam siphon, blower, and whistle are also included. It is capable of carrying two adults and can pull about five tons. Two centered bronze bushings. Okay. Right, so two each. So we've got looks like two bottles of thread lock. One's for bearings, one's bearing bearing adhesive. Yeah. And one is retaining nice grade. Strength retainer. Yeah. Okay, we've got our intention will be to show the unboxing and photos of all parts included in each kit. We will highlight each assembly step in order with a combination of still photos, video, and time lapse. In the case where the same task is repeated, we will show that task only once to save time. Tasks such as removing mill scale, deburring, sanding, and cleaning parts, painting, and lining will only be demonstrated in this video but will be common tasks throughout most kits. Okay. Looks like they're round, nice and rounded too already. Okay, we have two outer covers and various screws. Mm -hmm. We have two hubcap fasteners. We will also attempt to keep each video installment in approximately the order of the kits as much as possible. At times, to accommodate various production needs, some kits may arrive out of order or with various pieces back ordered. 
When necessary, the company is very helpful in providing guidance with assembly issues. A forum is also available to converse with other builders to share progress photos or to ask questions. Additional videos in this series will appear but at no set time frame. If you choose to follow the series, please be patient as I'm sure videos will be released very sporadically as a particular kit is fully or at least substantially completed. The company provides options for some additional equipment such as an auxiliary water bowser, a trailer, and other variations of model traction engines in 2 inch, 4 inch, and 6 inch scale. A link is provided in the video description. Here he comes to inspect. Oh, I'm glad they pressed that on there. Hmm. Oh, what a nice job. In this first installment, we will be constructing two front wheels. Now look at how the, see how the, the rubber actually comes over the rim a little? Mm -hmm. There's no way we could have put that on. Mm. Nice. And the back wheels are going to be bigger. This is going to be pretty darn big. Yeah. Okay, kid. What do you think? Good project for you to put together? <laughs> you grab your little tool belt. Yep. The first step is to deburr and remove the mill scale on all spokes and the wheel rims. There are many methods to remove the mill scale. It is important to do so before painting parts. If this step is omitted, over time the scale will separate from the surface of the part, causing hours of careful painting to fail. The method we chose was to use cleaning vinegar. The task began by finding a suitable container to hold the parts. Once parts were placed, vinegar was poured until the parts were covered, then left to soak overnight. The next day, the parts were removed, and a wire brush easily removed most of the scale. The parts were then rinsed thoroughly with water and dried. So when did I put these in? It must have been soaking almost a day. Almost a day. ordinary vinegar. Parts were then cleaned further with files, sandpaper, a an mangle grinder, belt sander, and a rotary tool with various bits. Be certain to follow good safety practices including gloves, safety glasses, and dust masks when appropriate. Edges are eased slightly with files and sandpaper to reduce some risk of paint chipping.
I'm using a simple deburring tool. get rid of the large burrs in the, in the holes. For the wheel rim, there was some excess rubber from the vulcanizing process that had to be trimmed from the side of the metal rim. And a little more sanding to do on this rim before we can assemble this. Once all metal parts were prepared, it was time to begin assembly. All parts were clearly identified when initially packed. Take careful note and study each part to ensure they can be identified later. At times, it might be helpful to use a permanent marker to identify similar parts after cleaning. Parts were test fitted together before any final or permanent assemblies were done. It is much easier to make corrections when parts are loose or sub-assemblies are smaller. Assembly began with using temporary bolts to loosely fasten every other spoke to the rim. Once half of the spokes were attached to the rim, the hub was inserted and screwed to the other end of the spokes. There is an angled hole for the axle oiler that must be oriented correctly to the rim and spokes. It is also important to pay attention to which side of the rim the spokes are attached in relation to this hole in the hub. The instructions and included diagrams show this clearly. Bolts are put in the outer holes first loosely. And then the rivet bolts will be added in the center hole. The temporary bolts removed and then the Rivet bolts will go in the outer holes as well.
rolling one of the spokes with the oiling hole. Next, the rim was flipped and the remaining spokes attached to the rim and hub. All spokes attached to the rim from the same side. We noticed several spokes did not seat fully against the rim because the fillet between the wheel rib and rim interfered. This was easily solved by grinding a slight angle or radius along one edge of the spoke to relieve this area. starting to look like a wheel. So it's important to keep the different spokes separated so you know which is which. We put each type of spoke in a different box and included the original bag and part labeling. 
and worked at them out of separate boxes to clean up the parts. Once satisfied with the assembly, all bolts and screws were tightened. Next, a batch of JB Weld was mixed up and one spoke at a time was removed. A generous portion of JB Weld was applied on the hub beneath the area the center of the spokes attached to. The screws were then tightened completely, forcing out a quantity of the JB Weld. This was repeated for all spokes on one side of the hub.
Next, additional JB weld was applied over the face of the hub before placing and securing the outer hub cap. The JB weld was checked and pressed around each spoke where it meets the hub and along the gap between the center hub and outer hub. On the full size engines, the hub would have been cast with the spokes to form one piece. The intent with the JB weld is to fill all gaps between parts, then clean up the surfaces to create the appearance of a single casting. The screws holding the outer cap to the center hub were also covered in JB weld, then smoothed to conceal the screws completely. Once complete, the wheel was flipped and the process repeated for the remaining spokes and outer cap. get it close with the Dremel and then do the final adjustments with the hand pumps. We were concerned about leaving bare metal between mating parts and so opted to stray a bit from the instructions. Once the JB weld had cured and all joints cleaned up, we removed all bolts from the spokes at the rim and separating the spoke and hub assembly from the rim. Each was primed separately and painted. To aid reassembly, we placed tape on the tire and marked the area that lined up with the oiler tube hole in the hub. This way we could be assured that the spoke and hub assembly would be mated with the rim in the exact same orientation later on. For painting we wanted to try traditional coach painting. We were building our engine in a suburb of Detroit, Michigan in the USA. At least in our area the process of coach painting is unheard of. We attempted to source proper paints but could find no enamel that was of the proper formula and available for purchase or shipment to us. After consulting our local paint shop, they suggested a paint line manufactured by Benjamin Moore called Ruscat. It is a urethane modified alkyd resin paint. As of this recording, it was announced this product line is now discontinued to be replaced by Rust Avoid. So far, I do not know if this replacement product will be as suitable to the project as the Ruscat. Initially, we tried brush painting 
then using a second brush to lay off the coating. The paint was modified by a portion of Flood brand Penetrol to help the paint flow and level. Our technique certainly took a long time to perfect, as did the mixing ratio for good results. Three to five coats of primer were used with sanding after the second and successive coats to achieve a very smooth surface. Because of the red color we selected for the wheels, many coats were needed to build up the proper color. Successive sandings between coats were needed after letting the paint dry, generally for a week or longer between each coat. Eventually, we succeeded in obtaining a fairly smooth finish. Although not perfectly smooth, brush marks are minimal and subtle from all but a very close inspection. Once into the tender kit, many months later, and still struggling to maintain a good paint finish, we reluctantly resorted to spraying the paint, although that too was not without some drawbacks. To line the wheels, we used a combination of tape and a bugler lining tool. We actually ended up with two of these tools, which worked well for the side yellow stripes. One tool was set with the guide to the left of the tool, and the other to the right of the tool. In this way, the striping could be completed without stopping to readjust the guide wire at all. Several months passed before we were ready to line the rims, which helped ensure the paint was very fully cured. Before reassembling the wheel, the bronze bushings were set in place with bushing grade adhesive included in the kit. The hub was carefully cleaned and prepped to remove any paint where the bearings fit. A few edges had to be relieved slightly with sandpaper and a touch of filing to get a good fit. Even so, the bearings fit snugly in the hub and required some assistance from a hammer and a block of wood to set fully in place.
the oiling tubes and caps for the wheel hubs as supplied did not fit to each other. We discovered a mismatch in the way the threads were cut in the tubes. Replacement tubes were sent from Steam Traction World and those fit very well. These were polished and fitted to the hub at this time. The rim was then placed on the hub assembly and temporary bolts attached to join the assemblies together. The tape markings made it very easy to correctly align the spokes to the hub in the same arrangement as the initial assembly. Bolts were only attached in the outer two of the three holes in the spokes. Once tightened all around, the special rivet bolts were inserted and tapped home in the center holes machine nuts are included to secure the special bolts. Before tightening, permanent high strength adhesive, also included, was applied to the nuts. Once all the center bolts and nuts were placed, the outer spoke bolts were replaced one at a time with rivet bolts. One bolt was replaced in each spoke all around, then the process repeated for the remaining bolts. It is important to note the correct placement of the rivet bolt and nuts. The rivet bolts are inserted from the outer surface of the wheel rim, then through the spokes. The nuts are tightened against the spokes. This too is carefully diagrammed in the instructions. Before painting the rivet bolts and nuts, more JB Weld was mixed and a small amount applied to the top of each nut. Once dry, each nut was carefully ground using a rotary tool on a flexible shaft. The intent is to round over the nut head and blend it into the end of the bolt. When completed and painted, the nut will resemble the head of a rivet. The final step was to prime and paint the rivet bolts and nuts to match the rest of the wheel. Coming up next, we will look at assembly of kit 2, the front axle, perch, and smoke box saddle. <laughs> 